Should you replace the capacitors in your older vintage stereo equipment? Well, the short answer is yes, but we'll get into it. Uh, the question comes from Ihor in Toronto, Canada. Uh, and, to, and Ihor writes, I have an Aragon amplifier and preamp, which are about 20 years old. I keep hearing that I should take them in and have all the electrolytics or at least the power supply caps replaced. Do the caps truly deteriorate over time or are newer ones better for some reason? If I do replace the caps, what difference should I expect to hear? I use both digital and analog sources. Well, as I said at the beginning of the, the video, yeah, um, whoa, forgot. You know what's kind of neat here? Let me show you something. We're in our new space. So um, see these desks are all stand-up desks. Check this out. So for Ohm's Law listeners, I am uh, raising with our little electric motors, see ya, um, the desk so that you can, <laughs> you can <laughs> and now I'm gone. All right, I'll put it back down here. Um, so our, our crew, the engineers, can decide whether they want to stand or they want to sit or, you know, however they want to uh, run their own desk. It's a pretty slick system. And uh, Terry, my wife Terry, picked all this out. It's really cool. It's, it's pretty neat. So I, we're just playing with the new toys. We're in the new, we're in the new space now. Okay, so yeah, here, here's the problem. At 20 years, you're probably okay, but you're borderline. And electrolytic capacitors are basically a chemical slurry of an electrolyte paste that modern caps can go for a while, but over time and heat, that paste will dry up and the actual value of the electrolytic will go down. So let's say in your power supply you have oh, 10,000 microfarads at uh, 35 volts. Well, over time and use, that uh, concoction of, 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 of film and foil and electrolytic paste is going to dry out and that 10,000 is going to go down to 6,000 or 4,000 or if it's old enough, uh, e even lower. Now when that happens, then the capacitor doesn't act like a 10,000 microfarad capacitor should, right? So we remember in a power supply, capacitors supply energy. It's like a storage unit and they're, we're using them to smooth out the uh, 60 times or if you're in Europe, the 50 times uh, bumps and the cycles coming into the AC. So on initial charge up, that first little bit, the capacitor is charged up like a battery and then when we pull power away, because we're in this up and down, up and down AC sine wave, um, it holds its charge and slowly drains out until the next time. And it, so it smooths out the ripples in the AC. As they get older, they smooth out the ripples even less. So yeah, I mean, it's not that hard. There, there are capacitance meters. I, I just routinely at about 20, 30 years tell people, just get them replaced. It's not that expensive. There are good modern capacitors. And really, as long as the package size fits, all you really need to, to know and be concerned with is that you have the appropriate voltage and the appropriate capacitance. So if it's a 10,000 volt, I'm sorry, <laughs> whoa, 10,000 volts. If it's a 10,000 microfarad capacitor with a voltage rating of 35 volts, that's really all you need. Now, that said, when we get into high-end audio equipment and high-performance audio equipment, many companies, like PS Audio, are very particular about the kinds of capacitors that we put into our equipment. So we worry about things like uh, ESR, equivalent series resistance. So we buy particularly uh, low ESR. We don't want that, that series resistance in the cap. We buy very low ESR caps, very high quality caps, because they make a difference in the way things sound. So if you can replace it with the same Panasonic or Sprague or whatever uh, part that you, you, you want to put in there or that was originally in there, do try and replace it with the same part if you can. Or there's, I can't think of any instance where a low ESR cap is going to be worse 
So it's probably always going to be better. And if you go to a, pl a place like the Parts Connection, which is an online um, uh, website where you can buy that kind of stuff, just search for electrolytic, low ESR electrolytic capacitors, buy a real, you know, spend a few bucks, and just make sure that the, the, the package size is going to fit or that you can get it in there somehow. And do make sure the polarity is correct. So electrolytics are polarized caps. They've got a plus and a minus. At least one of them is marked. And you do want to make sure that those are put in correctly because if you reverse bias an electrolytic capa uh, capacitor, kaboom! <laughs> I'll tell you a real quick story and then, then we'll go. I, I was, you know, uh, in another life, I was a disc jockey, and I worked at KXFM in Santa Maria, California, among other stations. And we were always, the, Jim Muscle and I, the chief engineer, were always tweaking and trying to make the station sound better. Well, you know, we're audiophiles, right? So why, why can't FM radio sound good? Why does it always have to sound like crap? Like our local station here, KBCO, used to be good. They got a hold of a clear channel. One of those guys bought them, and now they've just you know compressed the crap out of the out of the the music. So everything sounds like a wall of sound, awful. But back in the day, we had our our station KXFM at one point sounded almost as good as as our hi-fi. I mean, it was excellent, and and we had a limiter, of course, but there was no compression. It really sounded great. Just sounded like a turntable playing. Anyway. So I was in uh, the mode of improving the sound quality of the control board. And I had the control board opened up and I, was, I had been changing a, a, a capacitor. I put in, I think, a bigger power supply capacitor. And I was doing that while the guy was on the air, right? And I happened to have put it in backwards. And as I'm, you know, soldering away and he's, you know, rawr, 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 talking about this or that, all of a sudden, that sucker heated up and exploded, sending spirals of paper and junk all over the room. It sounded like a, like a like an M80 firecracker going off, and I think I mean I fell over, and, and so uh, because I was so scared, and the jock said some kind of obscenity on the thing, and, and all of, both, all of us thought it was a gunshot, uh, seriously, and and. Uh, that, w that was hilarious, but we finally recovered and laughed about it and, and said something about to the people, like, you know, don't call the cops, we're, we're, we're okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye.